see it with micro glint. If you can just see it there no more. There you are. In this case I'm going to be using yellow and this one here is pearl. Now these are basically what we used to call metallic metallic threads uh, with a metallic strand protected by an antron fibre, fine antron. But they're very good for to actually use as a thin thread and as well obviously to colour the part of the fly. Now my favourite fly using the pearl this was my dropper fly for years when I worked in a trout fishery, uh, especially the more so at the beginning of the season, and then smaller sizes. This is a B175, it's a size 12. Main sizes I would tie this would be 10s to say 16s. And you can still use the, the same thread, so. And you simply, all you do, it's very simple dressing, just to give you an idea. You start at the head. Just put down a layer of the pearl thread, or the, all the way down the shank, until basically just before you get around the bend. And then you get your pheasant tail fibre, and this is case is dyed black. Now when you bring out about half a dozen fibres, just bring them 90 degrees from the stem. You see how when you do that the tips line up, and once you do that, you tear them away from the feather. The length, two thirds of body, over the back. Just do a couple of turns and then keep it, always keep the thread or, or your glint thread nice and tight and then take it up. Now to protect this and everything basically give it plenty of protection. What I do is get some fine su or super glue or you could use fine varnish if you want. Just put it onto the shank of the hook. I'm going to wind the pheasant tail fibres towards myself. Just spread them out. Just work your way up. You get to this point here. You basically just come across the pheasant tail, do a turn, and a turn onto the hook. Do the same again, just to make sure it's locked in. And then, I mean, super is going to hold it, so... The waste piece that you've, you've left behind, you bring this up as a rib. Work your way up. Now you'll find as you wind up, it may change colour, the pearl, the thread. So it basically goes a bluey colour, which is fine, which is what you want. And then you just tie in or tie the waist piece in, work up towards the eye, come back down, stop at that point there, just Fold the pheasant tail fibres back, rub them with your nail, come round, single turn, and then what finish? You're looking probably right three turns, nice and tight. Trim it, leave about say a mil and a half or so of the fibre, and then you can varnish the thorax area, just there, or I'm just going to use some. I like UV resin for speed. I just put a wee drop on my desk and then apply it with my dubbing, my dubbing needle. To that point there, you can put it onto the notch slightly. But I usually just put it on the underside. And then get your torch. Set your resin. And there we are. Now I'm going to change over, I'll change it, I'll basically show you the sort of buzzer version, but I'm going to use, this is the orange. You can see it right so you can see it, and you can see it, the micro glint and orange. Red's very good in this one as well, so, but to be honest with you, this, this here, great pattern, excellent fly to have in your box. And I, I do really, I do like it on the straight hook, so, now I'm just going to use a, a B110. In this case, we just use a size. Try to size a smaller size just to show you how small you can go. I'll use a size 14, or even there's a 16. I mean, it, it'll give you an idea. I mean, there's just to show you that I'm using a size 16. There's the the B110 size 16. And I buy them in hundreds. You save money if you do that.
into your base. There we are. The exact same, really. Just start your thread. The glint at the the eye. Put down. Basically, the what I do is the thorax length. Now, orange goes with black. Obviously, it goes with olive. Now, just tie with olive one. This is a brown olive. You can see nice colour. And again, just bring it down to the grease from the stem. We'll line up the tips. Half a dozen fibres is plenty. This size anyway, to keep it as thin as possible, I quickly bring it down and pull the fibres at the same time, keeping... I don't want a layer too heavy of this thread on the body in this size. And then come back up in between these turns. And then... Tiny bit of super glue because basically you've tied it that way, it's not as strongest in the world, but the super glue will certainly help. Then I'm going to wind it towards myself, opening out the pheasant tail, spreading it out. Just work my way up this point here, across your thread, do a couple of turns, one on and one off. Bring your waist piece up, this is going to be your rib. And then on top, just going to carry on down towards the eye, same time obviously tying in your rib. And then start to come back up, bring it over, do a turn, slightly flatten it with your, your nail. And then a couple of turns, don't go any more than two. And then slightly trim it, about a mill or so from where you've tied off. Just gives the impression of small wing buds. And there, basically there you are. We quick look to see how it is. Really quick to tie. I mean, when I work in the trout fishery, this is the type of pattern that I used regular. And uh, you can't go too far wrong. See, that's the buzzer version. It's just a matter of getting your torch. Set your resin. You can fill your box really quick with these. Now I'm going to show you a rubber pattern. It's very simple to tie. Now I'm using a 2 mil tungsten bead. And the hook I'm using is a, is basically an Osprey. This one is by Benyards. It's a lovely wee hook. Um, and this one's a, it's a grub shaped one. Uh, obviously in barbless. So ideal for the small nymph patterns like um, especially for the grayling and the brown trout. And back to using the, the micro glint. In this case, I'm going to be using the yellow. And simply, oh, well, you start at the bead, but what I'm going to do is first is I'm going to get some lead. So it's a sticky back lead foil. It's going to cut a piece off. It's a thin, so maybe a mil, less than a mil thick. Just to thicken up the body and give it a better taper. So, so we start simply the back. This point here, wind towards the bead. And break off that waist piece, and then wind down. I don't know about three turns or so. Put your finger onto the the lead and then break it off so it doesn't so sort of basically roll. I usually like to roll it, touch it with the back of my finger just to smooth it off a wee bit. Then we're back to our, our thread. Now, waist piece is going to be our rib. So when you start it off at the bead, just controlling the turns as I go down with the base piece to this point. See, you've got some kind of taper there, as you can see. It helps you form that shape and obviously adds a tiny bit of weight. Now, I'm going to use for the tail and for the back, I'm going to use, this is just basically cock pheasant tail, uh, the natural brown. Now I'm going to use quite a few fibres here, uh, it's about probably 10 fibres, but uh, I'm actually going to be, these are the fine fibres, the small fibres right at the bottom of the, the, the tail, 
which mostly we just don't use, but it's very good for flies like this because I find it it's nice and thick. It's got a good fibre on each. So just tear it off, line up the ends. Oh, that wee broken one there. Hold on. Just make sure they're not broken like that. There was one or two broken there. So you get that in these. So you bring them 90 degrees from the feather and tear them off. That's should be them. Length of the tail, just a small tail, short, short dumpy tail. Now come round to the back here, come in with a turn, nice and tight. So tail formed. And then wind with main thread up the body, just forming a nice shape. This point here, come over. All I'm going to do here is just bring this over, come round with a kind of a loose turn or two, and then using your fingers, just bring it, get the fibres to sit where you want. Because your waist piece is your rib, it's going to protect us. And then we just come, come up, get them reasonably close together, the turns, nice and tight. Always check and see where they are sitting. It's a very simple dress and it's easy to tie. And it's a good way of using these type of metallic type threads. Now the waist piece, what you can do is, what I like to do sometimes, just take it, carry it up towards the bead itself. It's like just form a sort of small loop. So I tie forward so that basically it's in on the side. Trim that away. Trim the pheasant tail away. See, things are nice and tidy. Get some, this is some squirrel dub. This is by Wopsy. Just lightly dub it into your micro glint. Metallic thread. Nice and lightly do it, just take your time. Give it some legs, give it something. Get this point here. I just pull this loop I've formed with the waist piece but to the back of the, the hook. Now, what you can do to make this to save you to, to, well, please basically try to get the varnish. I used to put a wee bit of super glue onto about the first half inch or so of the material and then what finish. Three times is plenty, and do it quick, because if you go too slow, it'll stick. Trim that. This loop here, as you can see, formed. These can give impressions of small legs, so a wee bit of flash into the leg anyway. Now, as long as you want it. And there we are. Now you can get a wee bit of Velcro to bring some of the squirrel dub out. You could fold back the pheasant tail fibre as well, but I've not, I found that you don't need it, so I'm slightly darkening it down. But there you go, it's very simple. It's a simple way of getting a two-tone body and as well using these metallic type threads.